Hello, hello. I'm Hannah from Sweet Fern Homestead, and this week is Kid Vacation Week. So I do not have the luxury of waiting for my hair to dry. I don't know if it's a change of season, but I had this memory come up of this lentil soup, lentil barley soup with Swiss cheese, grated Swiss cheese on top that I used to make years and years and years ago before I was a health coach. And I loved that soup so much. It sounds so boring. It's one of the best soups ever. But here's the thing. It hurt my belly. It like just destroyed my insides. It took a long time for me to figure out that I could really change the way I was experiencing eating beans and lentils and grains through soaking and sprouting. Now you are going to hear all sorts of chefs. You're going to watch YouTube videos. You're going to see really cool people that you love and adore and they're going to say, you do not need to soak your beans. You do not need to soak your beans. You don't. You don't need to soak your beans. You can cook beans. You can cook lentils. You can cook brown rice. You can do all that. You don't have to soak them. You don't have to sprout them, but you want to. And here's why you want to. Phytic acid. So phytic acid is this coating that's on the beans, that's on the lentil, that's on the brown rice, and it's stopping the absorption of all of those wonderful vitamins and minerals that you could be getting from that food. Now, not only is it stopping it, but it's also preventing the absorption of those things from all the other foods you're eating at the same time. So we're gonna do the same thing like a little squirrel would do when it finds a nut little acorn. It's not going to go eat that little acorn. It's going to go bury that little acorn. It's actually soaking and sprouting that acorn. All of a sudden, that coating, that phytic acid, I think it's phytic, not phytic, that phytic acid is going to melt away and you're going to have that beautiful little shoot, that little sprout coming out of your lentil or your bean. And that's what you want. Once you reach that stage, you're good. Go cook those up. You're golden. Your belly will thank you. Your body will thank you. The health rewards, the health benefits from this, it's, I'm at the point where I'm like, if I'm not going to soak and sprout, I'm not going to eat them. I'm just not going to because one, the pain that I feel in my belly, and two, I just, I know what else is going on in there. I know that it's creating havoc. This is really important. If you are vegan, if you are vegetarian, you need to soak and sprout. And again, you're gonna hear it. You're gonna hear, you don't need to. You don't need to, to cook them. You need to, to absorb the minerals, the vitamins. They're there. All right, enough of that. I've got my soup. We ate this soup last night. I think Dave had three and a half servings of this soup. And let me tell you, when I told him what was for dinner, lentil soup, lentil stew, he wasn't thrilled. It is so delicious, you guys. I'm letting the cheese just melt while I'm talking to you. It's so good. I'm eating this for breakfast. Hold on, I need to eat some. When I tell you this is one of the best soups I've ever had, best juice, I'm not kidding. If you are vegan, vegetarian, just use vegetable stock, no biggie. I'll uh, write the recipe up and I'll put that on a blog post so you can go find it because watching me cook, there's no recipe. I'll just make it up. I just go along. I just have fun in the kitchen, but I will, I'll figure out some measurements and get that down for you because I want you to make this stew. I want you to make this stew, but more importantly, I want you to go through the experience and the process of soaking and sprouting. Okay, let's walk through it. So simple. You start with a bowl of water and whatever you're soaking. You get that set up. I usually do it in the mid-afternoon. You add either a little bit of yogurt, a little bit of whey, or a little bit of lemon juice, or maybe some vinegar if you have it. And that's just gonna help it get going. You leave that overnight. Then the next morning, you're gonna take that bowl of those beans or whatever you've got, you're gonna dump it into a colander and you're gonna rinse it off really well. 
especially if you use yogurt. I usually use lemon juice. And then you're gonna leave them in that colander and that bowl that you just dumped out and emptied, you're gonna set the colander on top of that bowl and that bowl will help catch any drips that come out during the sprouting process. Coffee. Okay, then for the next day or so, you're going to rinse in the sink, keeping them in the colander, those lentils, those beans, the rice, whatever, three times a day, maybe four, whenever you think about it, just leave it in the kitchen. You'll see it when you go in there to do dishes or wash your hands, just give them a rinse, put them back in the bowl, the colander on top of the bowl, let it sit. You will notice the sprouts will come out anywhere from a day to about three days. You don't need a full sprout. These don't need to be big, but you do want to see that it has started the sprouting process. And that's right about where you want to get it when you're cooking these up. You don't want to let them go dry. Don't let them go dry. Keep up with the rinsing and keep an eye on it and you will be so pleased. I'm going to tell you that the taste difference as well, when you have soaked and sprouted these lentils in this brown rice, there is a softness, there is a creaminess, there is a certain texture that you will not get if you had not done this. It is well worth it and your body will thank you. Let's get cooking. So, you know, the lentils took about a day of rinsing and the rice, I could probably go one more day on the rice, but I'm gonna go ahead and just call it. It's a perfect food right now for this transition from winter into spring because as you're sprouting these lentils, you're gonna feel spring coming. And then the stew is gonna give you that nice, warm, hearty feeling that we really are all desiring right now in winter. I've got my rice and my lentils all ready to go. And then the other thing you wanna have is your bag of scraps that you keep in the freezer for when you make stock. So you're gonna just pull that out so that you can add all of your scraps as you go. These are really tiny onions. My onions, this is a, was a first year garden, so most of my, my food came out small and that's expected in a first year garden. You can't put the pressure on yourself to be growing what you see pictures of other people growing who've maybe been working their soil for five years. You're not gonna get that um, in your first year garden. If you're growing organically, if you're doing integrated pest management, you're just not gonna get that same result that you see from people who have been gardening for a long time in their soil. So you're building up your soil and these tiny onions were part of that process. These tiny onions are part of what's gonna build that beautiful soil for, for this coming growing season. So it's a little more work to cut a ton of little baby onions, but the flavor is amazing. And just to feel like I grew that, it's pretty cool. I put my glasses on, but my eyes are still absolutely destroyed because these are such fresh onions. Oh, they get you, they get you. Then I'll work the celery, I'll get the carrots, and we'll get those sauteing. I'm very connected to my food when I'm soaking and sprouting. So again, no, you certainly don't have to, but yes, you do want to. Okay, so once those vegetables get going, I'm gonna dump in the lentils, the sprouted lentils and rice. I'm gonna dump in some whole tomatoes. 
I have no idea how many I'm gonna end up using, but I have a quart and a pint, so I'll probably put both of those in. Uh, I have two containers of chicken broth. Again, we'll see how much I end up using. And then uh, rosemary and thyme. I think I have my own rosemary and thyme somewhere in the freezer, so I'm gonna find those. All right, the rosemary and thyme are in. This is herbs, these are fresh herbs that I grew in the garden. I've gotta stay in there, sorry. Uh, fresh herbs that I grew in the garden and then chopped up and just froze. And then make sure you label them because you will forget what it is. Because I forget what something is five minutes later. You think you won't, but you will. These are wonderful, wonderful containers I freeze everything in these and I've got like you saw my chicken broth is in these I go through so many and they're stackable so you can like stack them up so I've got all my herbs stacked up and then I can just grab the one that says rosemary I can grab a blend that might be rosemary and thyme I can grab you know whatever it is I've got a ton of parsley in there and then just scoop a little bit out put it back in the freezer you've got herbs preserved I prefer it over dried herbs, so much more than dried herbs. If you can only grow one thing, grow herbs. Even if you can only grow one herb, grow one herb. Pick something that you love. Grow basil, grow cilantro. I would probably pick cilantro, I'm thinking. But you can, in one grow bag, in one pot, you could grow five or six different herbs all together. Those plants will keep giving uh, lemon balm. Grow lemon balm, but grow it in its own thing, like mint, it's very invasive. A lemon balm is a huge one. I drink that lemon balm tea all summer. You pick it, you can either dry it, you can use it fresh, you can make tea from it, any herbs, any of these herbs, and then it grows right back. So you want to actually keep picking them to encourage them to come back. So if I could only pick one thing, and this is how I started my garden, herbs, lettuce, I eventually added tomatoes and green beans, and then from there, I kind of grew everything. Okay, we're gonna add the lentils and brown rice. I'm gonna start with a quart of tomatoes. No, I'm gonna add the other. I can already tell. And then, I don't know if my chicken broth is gonna come out. It's frozen still which doesn't matter, but I may need to soak it. If you run a little hot water on there, you can get that. I gotta get my other one. All right, I've got my second container. Now these are frozen, obviously frozen, but they are gonna, as everything heats up, these will melt down in. And then once everything's melted and I can get this up to a boil, then I'll go ahead turn it down, cover it, simmer it, and just let it hang out and work itself through. I'm gonna add salt and pepper. I can hear the soup simmering. That's good, it's coming up to a boil. I'll have to go check it in a minute. I think one of the reasons I'm having a bad day is because yesterday I was driving our old truck that we shouldn't be driving, but I had to drive because Dave lost his keys and then took my keys, forgot to leave my keys, took the car that I had the one key for, I had no way to leave except for this old truck anyway. Blah, blah, blah. ADHD, couple problems. No keys, the only thing I could take was this truck that nobody should be driving. And I brought Chloe to the train station and then I had to go to CVS to pick up a prescription. And I'm in the drive-thru, I'm one car away, and the truck breaks down and I have to call AAA. I have 6% left on my phone. I am so grateful that I'm actually dressed and have shoes on at this point. I have to go tell CVS that my truck is broken down in their drive-through and they're not very happy or very kind about it. And then I stand outside and I direct traffic around my truck while I wait for the AAA tow truck because the hazards won't even come on to work. Even when the hazards were working, people weren't going around, it was weird. Uh, and so I did that for half an hour 
and people were so nice, they were so kind. But those things like rattle me, they like totally rattle me. So then David lost his keys, he had lost my keys, and we knew that my keys had to be here. So he started looking around and he found both sets of keys in the bin labeled dog leashes because I, ADHD, I label everything so that we know where to return things. So he thinks when he had taken the dog on hikes, when he was driving, he came back and he had the keys in his hands and he needed to take the leashes off. So he just stuck them in the leash bin, took the leashes off put the leashes away, never thought about his keys again, or mine. So we did find both sets of keys, thank goodness. The truck is at the shop, um, it needed to be fixed. So it's probably a blessing. But I think that's why I'm all rattled today. I'm like jittery and... Oh, I need to recover, the soup will help. We're getting a nice simmer here and then we're just going to cover that and just let it hang out. I know that looks like a lot of liquid but if you think about it you're cooking rice and you're cooking lentils two things that you would use a whole lot of water to cook so they're gonna absorb so much of that liquid it will become a stew I promise. So you can see all that liquid just absorbed into the lentils and rice. And the way I serve this, let's get that pit out of there, is a quick squeeze of lemon and a lot of grated cheese. You can use Swiss. I'm using a raw goat cheddar. And that's your finished product. Beautiful lentil rice stew. Okay, I'm editing. If you liked this, give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. And as always, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Should I name this video like channeling your inner squirrel? Oh, this is why Dave had three and a half bowls. That's so good.